welcome back to the Hustle Brothers, and it's a long-awaited video with the earnings calls for both Joby and Archer. So I know in the earnings call, we mentioned that we we're going to do a comparison, and I do apologize. I haven't had really a lot of time to get around to it. So today's video, what we're going to cover is the financials from Joby's earnings report, and then the financials from Archer's earnings report. And then at the end of the video, I want to do a bit of a comparison to see where both companies currently sit. So make sure that you Joby and Archer fans stick around to the end and we will be covering whose financials are looking better in Q1 2025. Now, without any further ado, we're going to jump into it now. So I've done this table for us all and we're going to have a look at it. So here we are with our Joby Aviation Q1 2025 earnings broken down. So I want to start off and just give you a brief overview on what I've done and what sort of titles I've given to each column so that it's easily comparable with previous earnings calls and earnings reports. So we've got the Q1 2025 is the one that we're covering right now. Then we have Q1 2024. It's always useful to see what position we were sitting in in Q1 of 2024, which was one year ago. So we see what that progress is between now and last year. And then, of course, we go back to Q4 of 2024, and that's just to see what progress have we made in the last quarter. So without any further ado, let me jump straight into it. So we've got the net loss, which is revenue loss, and then that's where we're sitting with the net loss. So it was $82.4 million. And don't worry, if you're an Archer fan, I am going to be covering Archer in the next few slides, and at the end, we'll compare to see How's everyone doing in the Q1 2025 and see who came out better? Moving on, the comparison with the Q1 2024 mean that it, here we can see it's decreased by 12.2 million and that's always a positive. So I'm quite happy to see that. Now, the interesting part was we actually see the Q4 2024 saying that it decreased by 163.9 million. And when I investigated into this, this was a lot to do with earn out, uh, earnings payouts and shares appreciation. So that number has completely been skewed from that Q4 2024 report and is not to be trusted really when doing this comparison because it's not apples for apples. So the net operating loss and operating expenses I've sort of done here in two columns. Um, I've clarified that it's 163.3 million. It's increased 17.4 million since Q1 of 2024 and comparing it to Q4 2024, it's 13, increased by 13.4 million. Now, there's a few reasons for this. For example, the Q1 2024, it will be higher than due to growth and prototype parts. And then for the Q4 2024 comparison, it will be higher due to R&D and personnel cost. So there's a lot of reasons why we'll be increasing the operating expenses. And I wouldn't be shocked if this isn't the last of it. So Let's not panic. There could be increasing costs whilst we're pushing forward and trying to get the part certification, the commercialization. We're trying to get the pilots trained up in order to get us through so that we can actually start flying these crafts and generating some revenue. So the adjusted EBITDA loss was 127.1 million. And this increased by 16.8 million from Q1 of 2024 and increased by 8.4 million from Q4 of 2024. So their cash or cash equivalent or investments is 812.5 million. Now, I don't know of any of you Archer investors off the top of your head, but we're about to cover that in the next slide. So make sure you stick around. Uh, other income was 80.9 million, and that increased by 177.8 million from the Q4 2024. And basically lines up with which I was what I was telling you earlier on about the net loss. So in terms of the reevaluation of, of warrants and earnout shares, there's $71 million. This increased by 31.9 million. And compared to Q4 2024, it's been higher, favorable reevaluation gain. As we've all seen in the last few months, there's been an absolute uptake on the stock price. So their estimated cash use for 2025, and I found this very interesting, is the 500 to 540 million dollars at the moment. And it's very much in line with what our targets were last year. And they seem to be sticking 
within that budget. And that is something that is going to be key for us going forward. And I'm hoping that we are able to do it. But if there's one thing that kind of gives me a lot of assurance is this next item, which is the Toyota investment. And it's the first tranche. And I brought this out in a video very recently. So make sure to go and give that a watch because I go into a lot of detail. But Toyota have confirmed that they will be releasing that $250 million investment. And it's massive for Joby. Um, it makes them the biggest shareholder in Joby at the moment. And yeah, great news for Joby. So anyway, we're going to go on to Archer Aviation. So Archer's earnings call was uh, slightly different. And uh, they had a net loss of $93.4 million. And this decreased $23 million from Q1 of 2024. And $104.7 million, for very similar reasons to Joby, um, for... Q4 of 2024. And this can all be expected at this moment. So the total operating expenses was 144 million, and this increased by 1.8 million and 19.8 million in Q4 of 2024. Their total operating expense is 113.1 million. And for all of you that are trying to go back in the video now and do the comparison, hold on. We're going to get to the slide and we can do a straight up comparison and discuss what we think this means. So the total operating expense is 113.1 million in Q1 of 2025. The comparison to Q1 of 2024 means that it's increased by 24 million. And very similar to what we were uh, discussing with Joby, it is due to the R&D at this stage and obviously with the additional operatives that they'll need to get this design over the line. And... Uh, it increased by 14.8 million for Q4 of 2024. So this is the big part, and I'm pretty sure that any of our Archer investors would have seen this in the shareholder letter, and it's that they have the biggest cash or cash equivalent in the EV toll industry, which is 1.3 billion. And this increased by 624.6 million from Q1 of 2024. So it goes to show this is a testament to Archer's endeavor over the last year that they have managed to significantly increase the war chest. And I imagine for a lot of our Archer investors, this will give you a sense of comfort and security that we're gonna be able to get over the line with the biggest war chest in the industry. So the cash used in operating and investing is 104 million and the estimated cash use for 2025. And then what for you, Joby and Archer investors are actually all here for is the comparison between the two. And I found this very interesting. We've only done Q1 2025. So I've done net loss for net loss. So Joby's was 82.4 million and Archer's was 93.4 million. And one thing I do find fascinating about all of this is they are neck and neck. And it just goes to show how close these two companies really are. We're talking $10 million difference between the two net losses. Then we move on to the net operating loss. And Joby's is significantly more, well, comparatively more compared to the net loss. But as they're vertically integrated, that is to be expected. Uh, the operating expense is $163.3 million to Archer's $113 million. And that's where we are getting to a stage of that vertically integrated model is going to be a very costly exercise. And could it come to Joby's downfall? They haven't got a big, as big a war chest as Archer. Um, and I'd like to know in the comments what you guys think. Is that a concern for Joby investors? The adjusted EBITDA loss is $127 million to $109 million. And this is the interesting one now, is the cash and cash equivalent is the $812 to $1.3 billion, $1.03 billion. However, I don't think this takes into account the 250 million tranche. So does that mean that Joby have now taken the lead with not only the design and the progress with certification, but also with having the biggest war chest in order to get over the line and to get onto the market? We have just discussed up there that their operating expenses due to that vertically integrated model is going to be significantly more whilst they're trying to develop every stage of the supply chain from concept all the way through to actually 
manning and flying these aircrafts, it's going to be a hell of a, a battle. And they will get complete and utter control, but there's going to have to be an awful lot of money poured into it. And the fact that they are quite comparable with Archer could be a concern for some EV Tom investors. Now, let me know what you guys think in the comments. That's been all from me. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll catch you next time.